The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse Girl. with Harvey Chorney of PAMI. We're in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. Uh, we are talking about soybean harvest, which is a very exciting time of year. Many new farmers are, are really enjoying this new crop, but it comes with a few uh, little hiccups in harvest if you're not fully prepared for it. Tell me, Harvey, what's the necessity of the flex header with soybeans? Well, the key uh, uh, thing about soybeans is that it grows very close to the ground and uh, some of your uh, uh, larger pods are right near the ground. Uh, you can't afford to lose them or leave them behind. Uh, one of the developments that they've uh, done with combine headers is the development of the flex headers. Uh, uh, there's a number of manufacturers who put those together, but the uh, key element is that you've got to be able to have your cutter bar very near the ground and uh, 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 cutting uh, as uh, right as close as possible so that you capture uh, the beans uh, right near the ground. Now with a rigid header, I mean, is it realistic to expect that you're really going to be able to skim that ground quick enough and do you run the risk of them picking up stones or, or dirt tag as well? Well that's the challenge uh, is when you're dealing with a rigid header, there, there's two features of a flex header that uh, uh, helps uh, it uh, follow the contour of the ground. Uh, the the uh, um, front face of it can go ahead and adjust and uh, uh, flex to follow the contour of the ground and then uh, the uh, combine headers are set up with an auto adjust where they skim the ground right on the ground uh, and, and will um, change with the topography to go ahead and uh, maintain the cut uh, right on the ground. Um, a uh, rigid he header is assuming you're adjusting it to the right height and uh, it's a challenge for the operator to make sure that uh, uh, they are, are staying right on the ground and then not bringing up any rocks or, or, or mud that will plug the knife and then cause problems that way. So uh, the, the, the flex is a very key element. Now we have the option of course of then adding an air reel uh, which is the setup you have on your farm which you've been growing beans for several years now. Is the air reel necessary or just nice to have? Uh, well, we looked at, uh, at the uh, uh, what we were shelling. We uh, our previous header uh, was a pickup reel, and uh, we were bringing it up and uh, uh, going over, bringing it over the cutter bar. Uh, but uh, we noticed that there was shelling happening, and when the shelling happens, uh, uh, the beans, if they fall in front of the knife, they're lost. Uh, you leave them behind. So uh, when we looked at the option of the air reel, if you did get any shelling from the, uh, uh, from the uh, pickup reel, which is still on the machine, uh, you've got an air blast that's basically taking any of the loose um, uh, pods or uh, uh, the beans themselves and blowing it towards the back of the auger. Uh, and then uh, that's captured and coming in the combine. So um, uh, you don't have to be... Um, like if you assume you can catch another half a bushel an acre, you multiply that over your acreages uh, and your, uh, um, the payback on the aerial we thought looked pretty good. So uh, that's, that's what we did, invested in our side. Now, um, there's also the option of a draper or an auger. Yes. And so, and what's your opinion? Is there one that's, that's much better than the other or is it what fits for your farm? Uh, well, we looked at the finances and the options of both uh, drapers uh, on our last uh, uh, header purchase uh, and um, we the, the drapers seem to be doing a better job of maintaining a uh, steady load on the combine uh, bringing in the crop uh, evenly and uh, uh, passing it through. Uh, they also seem to handle uh, the uh, wider width uh, uh, headers a little bit better um, the uh, like everything's got pros and cons. Uh, they're much more expensive, and uh, we looked at uh, uh, our side. Uh, we um, are at uh, I guess 35 feet with the header we've got now, and uh, we felt as though we could get away with the auger. And we're not sorry. Uh, it's doing a fair job for us. So once you've got sort of your header figured out, 
um, you're sitting in the combine, you're ready to roll. Any tips on the settings? Now, is the soybean setting button a good place to start? It's an excellent place to start. And why is that? Um, well, it's predetermined uh, uh, settings that uh, the uh, uh, companies have put on in their combines uh, based on their uh, uh, research and history. Um, the, well, I, I guess I'm going old school before you had the auto set uh, adjustment on the combine. Uh, you would go ahead and uh, look in your manual and you'll see a range listed uh, in terms of uh, where you've got your sieve settings, where you're running your uh, uh, thrashing cylinder speeds at, uh, uh, all of the uh, um, fan uh, uh, adjustment speeds uh, are, are all listed. Um, we've got to understand that uh, they've done a lot of their research in soybeans in the U.S., but uh, there's a lot of acres that have uh, uh, gone under their research team. Uh, so they've tried to uh, capture the best uh, spread and give you an optimized setting to begin with. Um, what we've done and uh, uh, um, haven't gone wrong with is starting with that setting and uh, then looking at uh, your uh, uh, losses on, out the back and how things are going in your combine and uh, staying also, always within the, uh, uh, the range that they've uh, got listed in the manual but uh, optimizing from there. Starting with the manufacturer's recommended uh, uh, settings is a very good place to start. All right, thank you so much, Harvey.